Hey everyone, uh, this is the fourth episode of the built-ins random star path series in which we implement together a new Nix built-in function and we use that as an excuse to dive into the internals of the code base. As it happens, we have already implemented a satisfying version of the built-in in the previous episodes and so today I'd like to try something a bit different. Uh, so I'm pairing here with Georgi Lyubinov and we're going to build a command line interface for the feature so that we can just run the nix store random path command and get a fresh random path right here on the command line. Um, so for that, uh, we'll have to dive into the core of the in-house framework that Nix uses to define its command line interface so that we can add the new command, register it with an help page, proper router completion and everything. And while we're here, we'll probably also take a look at the logging system to make sure that everything works fine with our new command without any uh, graphical glitch that might happen when things are used improperly. So let's get started. And please don't hesitate to give any feedback uh, you feel like giving uh, so that we know how to improve. And also let me know if there's any specific topic that you'd like to see covered here. Cool. Uh, so our goal today, um, so la last time we or we had an implementation of that built-in, so first a stupid one, then we optimized it in the local store case, and then we optimized it in a more general case uh, where we can be using the daemon and maybe uh, tunnel that over SSH with the SSHNG protocol. Uh, which means that although there's a lot of froth edges, uh, the built-ins itself uh, is essentially implemented. Uh, what I'd like to do today is to lift this one level up and not only expose this feature as a built-in, but also make it available as a command line uh, command uh, using the new CLI because it has a its own little framework, which makes it much easier to extend. Uh, the, the, the goal being that uh, would like I'd like to be able to have uh, maybe Nix store uh, random path, and this should uh, return a random star path, which currently it doesn't, obviously. And so for that, uh, we can have a look at how the command line is implemented, maybe starting from the uh, from the bottom, uh, like the entry point, uh, what's the entry point? Is that, is it, oh, main.cc. So that's the entry point, uh, for Nix. Yeah, actually the main function here. So, uh, yeah, we, you have a bit of, uh, boilerplate to properly handle the exceptions and all that. And then the main wrapped function is the one which does most of the logic. and the bit that actually does the parsing of the argument. So there's two different uh, argument parsers because all the nix commands being the new nix command and the nix dash all style commands are just symlinks to the same executable, um, mostly I mean, for a lot of reasons. One of them being that it makes Nix very easy to distribute, uh, at least in theory, by just dropping a single executable. Uh, and so this means that, uh, yeah, the, the argument passing will both pass the actual arguments and also this detect uh, the name of the executable that's being run. So the legacy command, the Nix dash uh, commands are registered uh, at the during the initialization of the program. And uh, so first, if we, if the program name, uh, which is the, the base name of the program of argv0, uh, matches one of these commands, we just uh, execute it and uh, don't go anywhere further. And otherwise, um, the parsing is slightly below. There's a couple of hard-coded uh, parameters, uh, mostly because we don't want them to appear in the documentation or anything. Uh, 
uh, they just they are just here used uh, in the build process to generate the documentation and you everything then differs to this uh, pass command line uh, function which is the one doing most of the logic so we can have a quick look at it um, this command line so ignoring the nix get completion bit which uh, is used uh, for i mean as its name indicates generating the completions um well uh okay so that's not the bit i was interesting that one is mostly a fairly standard uh command line parser uh you have like passing option that starts with a dash or with two dashes uh like the common way of doing that the yeah the import the interesting bit sorry is slightly below uh yeah so the parser generates a comment as a comment field which uh will select the command that we run, want to run and this commands are registered uh, also at initialization time so initialization time i meant uh, it's going to be a static data that's going to be uh, initialized before we ever enter uh, the main function and these commands are registered so they are things of type command uh, well it's not oh here it is a command which is an abstract class but we can register stuff of type command uh, which will essentially store that into uh, there's a somewhere a global uh, command thing of type commands uh, which will store all the available comments I don't know where it is we don't really need to search for it because it's really an implementation detail but if we look for example at uh, I don't know the next build command what's going to happen is that we have this cmd build which is an instance of the command type we've seen below um, because it's a subtype of installables command which itself maybe indirectly is a subclass of a command uh, so we initialize that we can come back to that later and eventually we would register that with this register command function and this will add uh, the cmd build uh, command to the some global map uh, that's going to be used by the argument parser to know uh, like if I type nix build uh, then I'm going to run the command that corresponds to build in this global table um, so that's uh, that's somewhat nice because we can easily write new commands uh, <coughs> the only thing is that we must link against them which could also in theory mean that we could have some plugins that could define new commands, although uh, it's not recommended to do that because the API is not stable in any way. Um, but for our case, it means that we could have a new, uh, actually let's start uh, writing a skeleton implementation right now. Um, so let's say that we have a store a uh, random path command that we want to write let me just have the thing on the other side uh, so we're gonna include command.hh app in the nix uh, yeah use the nix namespace because everything is defined here whoops and we can just define uh, so our straight cmd uh, random path which will be an instance of command uh, we'll see later which kind of thing uh, and probably something in here and eventually we can just say that uh, cmd random path will be register command cmd random path uh, random path Okay, and if we try to compile that, uh, well, Nix, the compiler is probably going to complain because command is an abstract class and we didn't implement everything. But in theory, that, I mean, if we feel this big filmy thing, it means that we ha would have a random path command available. 
so that's not exactly what we want though, because we don't want Nick's random path. We want Nick's star random path. Um, and the way uh, Nix implements that is that it has a notion of a multi command, um, which is just a command which accepts uh, sub commands. And the star command is one of these. Let me close that, it's taking a lot of real estate. And uh, we can, uh, once we have a multi command, we can register new commands uh, below it. Um, let's look at how we do that. For example, if we look at store delete, uh, so th that's the Nix store delete dot cc. So that's just a plain command. Uh, it's a store path command, which is a subtype of command, but uh, that's just a plain command. But uh, there's a different registration command for that. Uh, which say that to say that we register it under the store namespace. So we can do the same thing here. Register command to store random path. So do we perhaps also need to uh, inherit store something command instead of just command? Store paths command. Uh, here you mean? When yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, so we probably want it to be something a bit more precise than just a, a comment but uh, so the we have there's a whole hierarchy of comments uh, which crisp which does the help us essentially uh, so if we look um, so comment is just an abstract class uh, defining uh, what you want to have so a comment is something that you can run uh, yeah. oh, there's a prepare method which uh, I don't remember why it's needed maybe just to keep things cleanly separated. But essentially a command is something that has a bit of metadata, uh, mostly used for the help, and a run method that you need to execute. But then because a lot of comments share the same thing, for example, most comments will need to access to the underlying store. Uh, a lot also will operate on like the store path of the installables that you provide. So we have some uh, convenient subclasses for these commands. Uh, the simplest one is uh, store, yeah, store command, which is just a command that uh, requires yeah. a store. Uh, and so this command will, if you have an instance of a store command, uh, uh, so the constructor of the class will first uh, like initialize uh, an instance of the store for you and so once you reach this run method you already have a store available that you can use so is this perhaps how we're gonna get access to the store so that's what we're gonna do probably yeah okay cool yeah uh just we probably won't be needing it but to give an over a quick overview of some other uh common types um so you have this, yeah, this copy command, which is used for Nix copy. It's, so that one's a bit ad hoc, but just to handle the from and to arguments. Uh, more interesting one you have, for example, eval command, which was, is going to take arguments. Uh, so what Nix calls installable, so either uh, something from a flake or a file containing a Nix expression or directly a Nix expression with dash dash exp. And um, so this eval command, so no, actually this eval command is a bit uh, more abstract than that. It's just gonna give you the initialize an eval state, which is the ambient state of the evaluator. But you have, yeah, this so, uh, oops, source x pro command or even installables command, which is the one that actually takes uh, these arguments. And that one also has a an, an installables field, which is the list of installables that you can pass. Where installable itself is an abstract class, which can be either essentially an installable is something that you can build. So either it's the uh, like something from a flake or a Nix expression, or directly a plain DRV file that you can pass. And a command for like uh, Nix build, for example. Uh, 
uh, could be implemented as an installables command. And the actual implementation would just be take the list of installables and build all of them, which means that uh, all the logic of handling the arguments, evaluating the Nix file and all that uh, doesn't have to be handled by the command. Um, and you have some even uh, slightly more uh, concrete command like build path command we would just build the things behind the scene for you so that uh, a command like I don't know uh, nix path info for example which returns some metadata about the path you give in uh, it just wants the path to be already built uh, and it's going to be imp it's implemented as a build path command so that uh, the logic uh, we can actually have a look uh, path info uh, oh actually it's not it, it's a star path command which is even one level below uh, because build path has a list of uh, gives you a list of uh, where it is of installables which is uh, that thing with the guarantee that it, they are going to build and star path uh, just gives you the final star path that are built uh, star path command you take a, a vector of star path as argument and so if you just care about the final star path uh, you can use this command and that way you don't bother about uh, where they come from how to build them and all that <laughs> so we're not going to need anything that fancy uh, in our case because all we want is access to a store here we go um so we want this to be a store command and um so store overrides the run method uh, to like so that its run method is going to instantiate a store and this override which we can actually see will just get a store for us and call a new yeah there's, there's a lot of overload in method but a new overload of run which takes a store as argument which is the thing we're going to be interested in um, that one so our command is gonna we want to run so void run rep store and that's the bit that we need to implement uh, maybe now we can build and we're gonna get a nice no up command maybe we also need like prepare or maybe not i guess uh you don't need prepare uh it so if you look here it has a oh, yeah, implementation see. which is just an empty block yeah 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 uh, i actually have no idea where prepper <laughs> is used uh, doesn't seem to be actually used anywhere mm. uh, or maybe it is i just don't search heavily enough it is yeah maybe it's not used anymore uh, anyways so uh i just built it yeah and now i can uh, just make sure that i use the right nix i should have a random path method now yeah which doesn't do anything but we have that and because we've registered it uh, the nice thing is that if we run nix store help our random path command is going to appear appear oh. here uh, with no documentation because we not written any uh, and we sh should uh, i'm not sure that's going to work because i'm not sure what the completion is going to use uh, to get the things from but maybe oh yeah i get auto completion including random path oh cool so that, 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 that's why this uh framework is actually very very nice uh, everything's handled uh in a consistent and easy way so now we just need to fill in this um which should be easy because all the heavy lifting has already been done uh, in the previous sessions we have this random star path method from the store um we can just get our path which will be store 
uh, let's give it a name random star path and uh, so we just want to print it out uh, mm -hmm. so we could just uh, do something like that uh, so we need to print it uh, yep. that should probably mostly work uh, let's check it Is Cout done in some special way in Nix, or is it just the standard? Uh, Cout is just the standard uh, out. Yeah, okay. And now if we do that... Oh, it's slow, I don't know why, but it's working. Like we get a new random path each time. Just hope I don't have anything, any path, any sensible path in my Nix store that's going to show up here, but hopefully I don't. <laughs> Um, so that works. Uh, it's not ideal. Uh, yeah, yeah. This C out thing uh, is the standard out. It's nice. Uh, in practice, uh, there's a couple of things. I mean, in that case, it's not really annoying. But in general, there's a couple of things to be uh, careful about. Uh, one is how this is going to interact with the progress bar, because we don't want the output yeah. to be. I mean, the progress bar is going to only write to STG error, but like since in the terminal both uh, appear at the same time uh, like the actual thing that you print can be lost in the middle of uh, uh, yeah even erased probably by the uh, control uh, characters used by the command by the progress bar sorry so one first thing that we will want to do is to make sure that the progress bar is not running anymore um, so there is uh here we're gonna maybe just make a small digression and look at how the logging is handled in nix in general uh so there's a uh yeah so there's a logger uh class no abstract class say interface which defines what the logger should be uh essentially saying a logger uh, so you can have has a few methods you can log stuff uh, in a lot of different ways uh, some helpers uh, to, to log with a specific verbosity uh, and some uh, more specific methods like this start and stop activity which are very useful especially for the progress bar because uh, uh, you can use that to say okay now I'm gonna start uh, building and the logger can take that into account to decide how it's going to print the logs and now i'm going to stop the build and so the loggers can decide to print things differently depending on the current activity uh, it some loggers can even uh, so that's not really a logger anymore i guess but uh, get some uh, input uh, which is used for some new features like uh, the um, uh, flake local options uh, when you can specify some Nix options in a flake uh, but because that can sometimes be uh, uh, problematic from a security point of view any potentially problematic option will first prompt you whether you actually want to enable it or not so that's also the responsibility of the logger and so there's a few different uh, logger implementation um, which are defined in this uh, log format in um, um, so uh, this row and row with logs correspond to the old style uh, plain text um, so it's always plain text but the old style logger which will just dump uh, so with or without the logs, uh, everything that's happening, uh, bar and bar with logs is the new style uh, progress bar, uh, yeah. optionally printing, also printing the build logs. And this internal JSON is just a raw dump in JSON of uh, whatever's passed to the logger, which is uh, mostly used internally, but also exposed uh, in case people want to 
uh, pass it and assume the responsibility of depending on something absolutely not officially supported. Um, and so uh, the mostly nice thing is that uh, yeah, the, uh, so everything goes through this logger interface. You just have a couple of methods to set uh, the log format, uh, either depending on the command you're using, because all style commands will default on the raw logger, new style will default uh, to the progress bar. Uh, but you can also specify that on the command line. For example, I can mix build dash dash, uh, is it then a dash dash log format, uh, internal JSON, and it's gonna vomit me, yeah, a lot of JSON stuff. Or I can do log format raw, raw with logs and it's going to print me the build logs uh, in the old style way way um so that was a big digression just to say that we have a nice interface here and that we're going to break it uh because uh, yeah. most logs format won't really be a problem for us here uh, we could just print to see out uh, and not care about what's happening. Uh, but the progress bar is going to be annoying. But the progress bar exposes, uh, interface exposes a nice uh, stop progress bar function, which will, well, stop the progress bar and revert back to essentially the raw logger. If I, if I wanted to actually make a pull request to Nix, um, should I still, in principle, actually go through the logger interface instead to uh, be more you like, correct here? Yeah, if I wanted to actually write this and make a pull request to Nix. Yeah, yeah, we need, and we're actually going to do just do, do that just in a minute. Oh, okay, okay. I thought we were just going to leave it with the yeah. No, no, no. Now we're going to do that. I just wanted first to make sure that we've stopped the progress bar because you don't want to write anything to STDR with, with the progress bar running. That's gonna, that can be very messy. And yeah, yeah as yeah. you said, we don't want to directly write uh, to uh, STD out, but rather we we'll want to uh, use the logger interface. So there's a global logger variable, which is the, the main logger used everywhere. And we can just uh, logger right to std out that thing. And I think, I think this will, uh, I think this will also add a new line. Uh, I guess we just have to see. So let's recompile and yeah. Okay, so that does what we want again, but in a more uh, principled way, because now we've We've sh sure that the progress bar won't do anything. Actually, just just for the sake of demonstration, maybe we can try and do some nasty thing uh, <laughs> with the logging. Um, we can use an activity uh, just to. Mm, I, I'm not a hundred percent sure. I think it's gonna do something. Uh, so the, yeah, so the thing I mentioned is start activity and stop activity uh, methods uh, to make them uh, more convenient to use. There's an activity class, which is going to use a uh, ray to uh, run the start activity when you create it and run stop activity once it gets out of scope, which is very nice because you can uh, enter your function, create a value of type activity at the start of the function and make sure that this activity will stay alive just uh, within the scope of your function. So let's do that. And because I never remember, let's just uh, 
use an example uh, of an existing activity to remember how to create it. So we create a new activity. Oh, let's give it an original name. So this activity needs to take as argument oh, the logger. Um, so this is the uh, a verbosity level at, at which we want this to show. So like make it level one. Uh, that way it's going to show uh, by default. Um, then takes an activity type. Uh, here we don't really care about it. Let's just say that it's an unknown type. And a message to print. Uh, so let's say that we're trying to get a random star path from our underlying star. Uh, so FMT is a printf style helper. And we just print the URL of our store. Activity, sorry. Okay, and so if we re if we compile that and running and run it, we should have it's going to be very quick probably because the activity is only going to be here for a microsecond. But we should see the progress bar appear and disappear right after that. No, actually, we. Mm, why does it look that way? Up. Oh, hmm. Okay, anyways, so we have our activity starting. Uh, we have a yeah. path happening right at the end. And oh, that's probably because of the stop progress bar, actually. Over there. Um, let's try again and see if we don't have that. Because that output is somehow decent, except that we erase the second line. Oh no, I know why we have that. That's because we've set it to one. So in that case, it's going to be printed directly. If we were to set it to level, uh, I don't know, level debug, then it wouldn't uh, appear as it's online. You only would have uh, the progress bar mentioning it. And we probably wouldn't see that because uh, the progress bar wouldn't have time to really show anything. Okay, it still yeah. appears. Uh, oh, it still appears, but then it's erased by the next uh, line that comes up, which is the intended behavior. And now if we try to print something after that, might also not mess up the way I want it to. <laughs> That's the problem with this kind of things. It's always broken except when you want it to. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's working too nicely. <laughs> okay, so let's... Logger is too good. Just trust me that this stop progress bar is actually... Uh, something that you will want to have yeah so is there some other uh design possible for the logger where you don't manually control the progress bar and instead like when you write to std out or something the logger makes some uh decision to stop the progress bar or to wait until it stopped before uh... uh we could we could have done that i mean one first thing that we could have done uh is just add to the logger interface a method like uh, make non-interactive or something like that yeah which would just call uh stop progress bar for the progress bar and do nothing for the rest uh just hasn't been done and we could also make that to run by default whenever we write to std out uh, uh you need to be a bit careful about that probably because if you happen to write something to std out in the middle of your program which probably you shouldn't do in most cases in Nix, but that can mess up a bit your logging. But uh, that, that that could that would probably be a 
a, a good uh, a good thing to add yes and remove a uh, small uh, food again um okay so we have this method we have everything working on that front uh i guess we could at least we can commit that maybe you could uh, just add docs oh so yeah we didn't add any yeah. doc to it you're right i knew there was something missing so let's get back to the definition of our command uh where was it yeah um so it has oh so that's not the thing i wanted but uh, we also need to look at this category thing um how can we change this category oh yeah so this category describes um yeah see it's a bit like the git uh porcelain versus core commands uh you have several different categories f of commands um in our case, uh, we probably want the category. It's not so the, so the default one. Uh, it describes the main commands like mix build. Uh, probably not something we want here, uh, which probably should fit into the secondary tier. Uh, so we want to uh, set that um, by overriding this category uh, method. Category, category, return cat secondary. So that's already something uh, that we want to do. And then we need to document that. Um, and so we need to remember how we can uh, document a comment. Well, let's look at, a, at an example again. Uh, let's get back to our build CC. It's definitely not the simplest command, but okay. So there's a few things. Something we didn't see here because we didn't need it is how to add arguments to our command, uh, which is done in a somewhat uh, sort of declarative-ish way, or a bit imperative too. But uh, just well. Uh, just using this add flag method uh, that you can run in the constructor, uh, which is going to create a new flag that uh, the comment can take as argument with a description and a handler which specifies what this flag should do, uh, which can either be a function or just uh, a reference to a variable. And if it's a reference to a variable, it's just going to set this variable and a completer, which is a custom function that can be used for the completion. Uh, and ah, we have this description and doc methods. Uh, and I'm slightly lost because that wasn't part of the command. Uh, class yeah. R, but command inherits from args, which is anything that yeah. can take arguments. And I guess there's both a description and a doc for args. Uh, where is it? Yeah, ha args has. Okay, so this description comes from args. Uh, so yeah, the naming is a bit uh, surprising in that case because I would expect. Uh, yeah. Anyways, so you, that's how we can fit in a description and a documentation. Oh yeah, that makes sense because a command is just a specific case of argument that we fit to the main mix command. That way things are that way. So we can uh, write the description. So We write the description. Let's also add a quick doc. Uh, we need to override all that. Uh, 
it should have been one. Base. Okay. Uh, and I think let me check there is um yeah the convention is to at least for the description start it in lowercase. So we can build it again. And the dock is usually included from some other place. Yeah, yeah. actually the dock. Uh, so the dock can uh, can be written in Markdown. And so for convenience, uh, it can be uh, okay, yeah. The often for big comments, the dock is written in a, in its own Markdown file, uh, except that it's uh, syntactically a C plus plus string. Yeah. Um, which makes it much easier to write the description. Uh, but because now if we look at the uh, Nick store help, uh, Nick store uh, random path uh, now uh, has a description and that's probably just a problem with my terminal colors because I think this somewhere should print that this is a different uh, comment here. Probably something weird with the, with the terminal colors. Uh, and we can look at the help for next random path, which will print both our quick description and the full documentation. And we can be a bit fancier. Uh, yep. Uh, uh, what's the exact syntax for that? I never remember. Um, R double quote maybe? Uh, like in the markdown file? Yeah, let's just copy the one from the markdown file and probably should be ended with... Oh. Okay, so let's make it a bit fancier. And recompile. By the way, I don't think it's an issue with your terminal, maybe because I see the same output from next door help. Okay, so that's probably an issue with uh, the help generation. Maybe, or we both have buggy terminals. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we see yeah. that it's a proper markdown. We have a, we have a bold thing here. Okay, so. Uh, if uh, someone watching this wants to open an issue about the uh, missing uh, header in the, uh, or at least the very confusing help output, uh, feel free to do that because I'm gonna probably gonna forget. <laughs> okay, so we have that. So it's, I would, I wanted to find an excuse to add an argument uh, to this comment just to show how we pass them and how to write custom computers, but I couldn't find something remotely sensible. So we're gonna stop there, I think, uh, unless you have any last question. Uh, no. Okay, thanks. And uh, yeah, see you, later. see you later. There's gonna be more excuses to work on that. Don't worry about it. Thanks too.